Hey friends, today I will share with you how I got into vet school. But first, this is my very, very, very nice mug given to me by Emily. I love border terriers, they're so cute. It's really cold, so uh, have a cup of tea and listen to the story, I guess. <laughs> Okay, this video will be divided into three parts. Number one, how I knew I wanted to do veterinary medicine, how I prepared for the application process, so work experience, and then third, the grades I got to get in. So I applied to four schools in the UK and also Queensland, Australia as an international student. So I got offers from Edinburgh, Cambridge, Bristol, and um, Glasgow, yes and Queensland, Australia. So let's jump right in. How did I know I wanted to study veterinary medicine? I remember feeling really overwhelmed in like career fairs and everything where people were like, oh, study this, maybe study that. And being from an Asian upbringing, the classic Asian degrees would be to study law, engineering or medicine. And I decided that I didn't really want to study medicine because I feel like there are a lot of human doctors out there, but not enough vets. I don't know if it's true back then, but um, it certainly is now. There is a worldwide vet shortage. So if you're considering a career in veterinary, I think it's a good shout. But there's also loads of problems in the profession, but that's for another video. So how I knew I wanted to be a vet. I uh, did some work experience at the vet clinic, volunteered at shelters, and then my sister asked me this question, and I think it was one of the main reasons why I decided to just go for it. She said, how do you see yourself in the future? And like, what kind of working environment do you see yourself in? And I really wanted to work in an environment with animals, so this is it, so I chose it. And I also had a strong science background, so I felt that strong science background and love for animals, veterinary medicine, there we go. So for work experience, I did two weeks of shadowing a local vet, and then I did one week at an animal shelter, and I also did 40 hours at the National Zoo, which was, that was really interesting because we got to do work experience at different departments, the carnivore department, the aquatic department, and everything, so that was fun. And I think that was pretty much it. Compared to a lot of other applicants I know, I don't think I did as much, but I still got in, so don't worry. If you can't get work experience, especially now because of COVID, I think they a lot of universities have put allowances in for that. It's best to check. Um, check each university website. You can also check out on my blog. I compiled a table of the requirements and things linked down below. That's mesunny.com. I guess other things to help you decide whether you want to be a vet or not is to try and talk to local vets, try and speak to people in the career, or leave anything in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer your queries. So for grades, for high school, I did the SPM exam, which is a Malaysian equivalent of the GCSE O-level exam. And I got nine A pluses and two A minus. And then I did Cambridge A-levels, biology, chemistry, maths, and physics. I got A stars in biology, chemistry, and physics, and I got an A in maths. Uh, I was one mark away from an A star. <laughs> anyway, that's not important. The important thing is to look at your university requirements so for Cambridge, they required two A stars and one A, and one of the A stars had to be chemistry. So I was really lucky and I got it. And I am in my final year now in Cambridge University Vet School. So yeah. So last part of this video is what I would tell my younger self. If I could turn back time, I would definitely still apply to do veterinary medicine, but I would tell myself three things so that it would sort of change my expectations about the vet degree. And these three things are number one, you're not only working with animals, but you work with people too, and quite heavily sometimes. Usually in the practice, you have a team, team of nurses, team of vets, and you communicate with clients and you have to speak with clients and communicate with them efficiently in order to get a good history from for the patient because the animal can't speak. So don't just think that, oh, I don't like humans, I want to be a vet. Bear in mind that working together with the human is uh, key to treat your patient, so yeah. Number two, don't set high expectations for a fat salary. For the UK, the pay is pretty decent, it's a good pay, but try not to compare or just don't compare to your mates who are in finance or law or consultancy because it's just a different pay, just different pay scales. And the third one is, it's a long commitment. So six years is kind of a long time. When I applied, I was like, meh, six years in Cambridge, should be fine. I didn't expect to feel a little bit left 
behind when all my friends graduated after third year and started like earning money and moving on in life. But um, remind yourself that life is not a race and you can move at your own pace. So I guess, yeah, that's it for the video. If you want to know more about the things that I've learned over the six years of vet school and things I would tell my younger self, this is a separate video that you can watch over here. And if you're applying to vet school, be sure to check out the rest of the vet school tips playlist here. And yeah, take care and see you in the next video.